Yo, what is up, BBC? It's Scooty here, bringing you a quick dubs match on Rundown. Uh, this was a pretty good game for me, uh, me and Anthony. We actually we lost first map against these kids. Um, you know they weren't that great, they weren't that bad. It, it's it was our first time in a while of actually running a dubs, so you know we weren't used to it and stuff like that. But uh, I ended up going clutch this round, which put us into third map, and I also went clutch third map, uh, which got us the win. <laughs> But uh, third map, you know, is really slow. You know, they camped a lot, so it wasn't really great to upload. And as you can see from here, you know, my connection isn't the best. You know, I get a lot of hit marks and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna be talking about a lot about the gameplay because you know that's sort of what I do. You know, try to help you guys get better. And right here, you know, I get wall bang. There's really nothing I could do. Um, part of you know the connection, he shoots me. I'm already around the wall, but I still die. And uh, Anthony actually gets really lucky right here. Now, it, this isn't smart, you know, what he's doing. You know, he saw the guy 10. He should have pushed a little forward so I could watch a bridge or, you know, get into a spot where he could watch both the bombs better. But he ended up getting lucky right when he turns around. The guy goes to plant A and he gets the easy kill. <laughs> but, um, you know, you'll s Rundown is a very one-sided map if you... But not as much for doubles, I guess. But, you know, for team and stuff, it's so one-sided because there's only really three places you have to watch or four including the river stairs but if you cut them off from getting into river you know it, it makes it only uh, three places which are obviously the three bridges and you know it's just it's a pretty easy map uh, to control on defense but you know teams like this one that sort of camp back more on defense you know allow you to push up um, but you know teams that really get aggressive on defense and push up you know guard the you know middle and A and B bridge you know uh, aggressively are the ones that are usually more successful and um, you know same thing on offense you right here you see us sort of playing it slow which usually on team isn't what we'd be doing but we knew uh, from last map that basically all they do is one goes to A one goes to B and they just sit in the corner and wait at it so um, you know we, we knew we could basically play it slow see if we can pick them off and cross the bridges you know they weren't gonna set up on the bridges and right there, I picked up one. We have bomb down, and uh, obviously they're in party chat because everyone party chat. So I'm pretty sure, you know, he called out bomb was down, and then he called out I was back in the spawn. So I was going to wait for him to push me. And uh, right here, whenever you have bomb down, especially if you only have 50 seconds left, you have to go get it. But you have to be aware, you know, I, I kind of waste my time a little bit. You know, I'm checking up to see if he was up on top of fountain, I mean, not fountain, refrigerator, which is a common spot. And you know what I'm doing is I'm checking my corners, but as the time goes down, you know, it's 30 seconds left, I, I start to get lazy, and that's why I die. You know, I get lazy, I don't check my corner, and boom, he gets me. If I had checked the corner, I probably would have gotten that round win and put us up 2-1, uh, 2-0, my bad. But, um, you know, I got lazy, and that's one thing that, um, you know, really in S&D, you have to not get lazy. Check your corners, especially against teams like this one that camp a lot in corners, like I, you know, just said. You know, they both go to a bomb and camp, but, you know, since he has a bomb down, he's obviously just going to camp in the corner. So, you know, on offense, you'll see us be a little more aggressive than the other team was, basically because, you know, if you're aggressive and you push up more, it, you'll usually be able to defend it better. Now, uh, last time, one rushed to the stairs riverside, so I was sort of waiting for him, but then I also wanted to check middle and tin. Uh, I didn't see him. And actually, I do something really stupid here, so watch what I do. I um I see a guy go A bridge, right? But I didn't see his partner. So I try to poke out right here to see if I can see him. And I actually do see him. I would have picked him off, but his teammate was back restaurant and got me. Now, no matter how tempting it is, you know, Anthony was over there at A. Um, so I probably should have just called down and let him get it. But, you know, he wasn't really communicating like, okay, I, I got A down and stuff like that, which is one thing that you really need to do, communicate. Because if you don't know where your teammate's watching and, like if if Anthony had said, "Yo, I got all of A if he goes onto the building and everything," I would have known. Okay, Anthony will get that kid. I don't have to poke out. But what I did was I poked out, which was stupid on my part. I'm not blaming Anthony at all. But I poked out, and that kid saw me. Um, you know, poking out isn't always bad. Just never in the way I did it. You know, getting on top of the roof of mid building. You know, it's middle of the map, no protection at all. You know, staying behind those sandbags mid building. You know, it's. A lot of people go up there, it's a popular spot, but you know, I can get down under the sandbags and protect myself. But right there, it was just really stupid on me. I don't know what I was thinking. And you know, I kind of hesitated to go there. 
um, because I knew I might get picked off. And uh, one thing you got to do is you you got to trust your intuition. You know, I I knew oh I shouldn't do this, but I did it anyways and got picked off. And right here, so now it's a one v two bombs and rivers. So I knew they'd be camping it. So I got the easy kill, and then. I actually heard a kid, so this is why headsets are so successful. I heard the kid and he actually started shooting at me from outside, but I heard him hop over here, so I knew he was just going to go to that corner, and I got the easy kill. Now, if I, when I heard him jump up, if I heard him drop, then I would have known he's in river, so I would have checked here. If I didn't see him, I would have checked behind me, but I didn't hear him drop, and I knew he'd be right there, so I got the easy kill, and that's why, you know, listening and learning, you know, different sound cues, is that's why it's so important. You know, people talk about, like, you know, the best headset and stuff like that. When really, you don't need the greatest headset. You know, Snuggy mentioned this a long time in one of his commentaries. Um, you don't need the greatest headset to where you hear every freaking leaf that falls on the map. Because the truth is, you know, they don't really help as much. If you have a headset that projects the noise uh, through both your ears and you can hear people pulling up, you can hear them dropping, you can hear them pulling nades or reloading from whichever direction they're doing it from then that's a good headset now obviously you know there are people that buy Astros and they're gonna have you know a little better quality or sharpness to the sound than the others but it's not gonna be it's I'll just put it this way it's not as much as it's worth like and right here I actually saw the kid and what he does is he pokes out which you shouldn't do but I shouldn't have chased him either I, I probably should have gone you know back where I killed him last round and sort of cut him off but, you know, right here I chase him and I do end up getting the kill. But like I was saying, you know, you don't need some $400 headset, uh, you know, to sound whore. You can get a simple $100 Triton 180s or something, um, you know, Turtle Beach X11s. And just turn it. You don't even have to turn it all the way up. Just turn it to where you can hear it and you'll know it. And right there I went for the prefire. I'm not a host or anything, but, you know, sometimes... Uh, I never prefire in the first couple rounds just because, you know, usually that's when other people prefire. But after it's, you know, it's been five rounds in, we haven't pre-fired once, so I knew they weren't expecting it, so I just went for the quick pre-fire and got them. Now, this was my fault. I called out both of them went A, because I did see both of them go A, but I was stupid. I was still saying, okay, he's still at A, when really, I can't see if he crosses over. I could see if he crosses over from one or two spots, but he could have gone all the way around Castle. He could have gone up front where I am right here. So, you know, that was my fault that Anthony went and died. And I probably should have gone to help him out. But, you know, right here, again, I have bombed down. And I knew because, you know, another thing you have to be able to do while playing S&D is learn the play style of your enemies. Because some teams, all they do is rush. Some teams, all they do is defend. You know, so right here, I knew he'd be camping. And uh, you have to think, what would you do? Um, and what I always do to watch B or Cam B is I get up in 10 and just watch it. So I knew he'd be back here. So I just simply crouch walk, saw his gun. And got the kill. So anyways, guys, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Um, peace to all my big boys. Come check out my channel if you guys are interested in this stuff. And uh, more to come. So anyways, um, yeah, rate, comment, and subscribe. And peace.